Welcome to Tennis Fit, where we put our spin on your tennis. Guys, special guest with me today, Nikhil. We got a special app for you guys to check out. Uh, stay tuned. All right, guys. So, special guest Nikhil from Swing Vision is here with us today. So, what is Swing Vision? Yeah, so Swing Vision is a mobile app for tennis. It uses artificial intelligence to analyze your video in real time. And then it provides you with several different things, a variety of stats that you would typically see in a professional broadcast match, video highlights, as well as personalized coaching and performance trends. And so you can track things like your shot placement, your court positioning from where you're hitting each shot, your shot speed, uh, the app can automatically detect what shot type you're hitting, so it's easy to see, you know, videos of just your forehands or just the serves that you missed. So what do we need to make this happen? Yeah, so it's pretty simple. You basically just need an iPhone and a piece of equipment to mount your device. So currently we're on iOS only. We'll be expanding to Android next year. Uh, and then there's a variety of different mounting options that we have on our website. Our website is swing.tennis. Uh, but basically these are just devices to mount your phone behind the court. As long as you can see all the court lines, you just hit record and then the app does the rest. Uh, if, if let's say we're, we're going to videotape a set between or two sets between two kids here, um, what is Swing Vision going to tell me in terms of stats? Yeah. So in terms of stats, we're tracking both the player and ball movement. So we're able to analyze things like shot placement, shot speed. Uh, we're able to see how consistent you are with each of your shot types. So like forehands cross court, forehands down the line, backhands cross court, backhand down the line, serve percentages. We break all of that out for you in the app. We also give you stats to kind of track your depth as well. So you can see percentage of shots behind the service box. And all of this is customizable so you can see it by stroke type. And then in addition to the stats, you have video review. And so we pre-cut a variety of different video highlights for you. So you can automatically see things like your five longest rallies or just your serves or your opponent serves. Uh, there's a variety of different things there and it's pretty easy to make your own highlight clips. Uh, and then the last thing I'll mention is that the app automatically cuts out all the dead time automatically. So if you're recording a match, let's say it's two hours, that's gonna be cut down to less than 30 minutes of actual play time. So it makes it a lot more possible to actually go back and watch yourself play. That's a big promise there, Nikhil. Exactly. And that's one of the biggest, I think, value props that some of our users see right now. Um, I mean, I played in college. We had footage of our matches and I almost never watched myself play purely because of what time commitment it took to sit through an actual match and watch it. And so I think that's one thing that's really powerful about this. You can watch yourself play within 15 minutes and get a really good idea of, you know, was I actually executing my game plan on the court? Was I hitting my shots the way that I was practicing them? And sometimes just seeing yourself on video just for five minutes can be extremely eye-opening. So definitely encourage people who haven't recorded themselves to try that out and see what they think. What Nikhil just said is actually almost revolutionary for the game of tennis. Um, I've only seen it once in the past, and that was through the Babolat uh, play racket. Um, and that was through my iPhone. And there was too many glitches and firmware problems and... You know, when you plugged it in and out too much, the wire would actually come out. So that whole program, that whole racket got abandoned. But this is where revolutionary in that it's an app that you download and it's on your phone and you can watch yourself on an iPad um, and analyze it yourself without the lag time. So that in itself, I believe, is revolutionary already. But there's more guys, just like that infomercial. Nikhil, what more is there coming? Yeah, so one thing that we're really excited about is actually launching a fully automated AI umpire. So what that would involve is quite similar to the experience actually to anyone that watched the US Open last year when there weren't line judges, but essentially having um, devices on the court that is gonna call the lines for you, announce the score and be able to just handle all of those disputes that come out in competitive match play and just take all of that out of it. That's what uh, we're gearing towards. We're working with the USTA, the ITA, some various different federations to certify that for competition use. And then we're actually trying to scale that to tournaments and leagues everywhere across the country and across the world. Uh, and then in addition to the officiating, we're gonna also launch live streaming this fall. And so 
with live streaming, obviously you'll be able to broadcast your match to uh, friends, family, a coach that you know otherwise wouldn't be there to watch it. And so that just makes the experience a little bit more interactive. And um, we're going to do some pretty cool things with the ability to customize what stats you see on your grab on, on your stream and the graphics that are on screen as well. So uh, that's two of the big things that we're gearing towards for this fall. That's definitely revolutionary. So I am definitely looking forward to that because one of the biggest problems in any kind of tennis is, you know, keeping score and line judging. So line judging, come on. You, you get hooked, everybody gets hooked. Ain't going to get hooked no more. So we've got a match that just started. We're looking at Darren, close by to you, uh, playing against Ryan on the far side. So long rally here. As you can see from the top of the screen to the right, you can see where all the shots are going. And Nikhil, what are we looking at? I see orange dots, green dots. Yep. So basically that heat map on the top right is plotting where each shot landed, just like you were talking about. The orange dots are gonna be backhands, the green dots are forehands. And you'll also see underneath the heat map, it's plotting the shot type and spin, as well as the speed of the shot. Oh, wow. So blue, that, that serve was in. You see Darren putting it away on a backhand, so it's orange. Good serve. Little windy day. So as you can see, he hit three straight forehands. They're all green. Four, still green. Perfect. See that serve mark? Yep, and then the serves, it also has different colors for first and second serve. So the first serve on the do side is going to be a dark blue, second serve a light blue, and then two shades of brown on the ad side. Ooh, I'm also seeing flashing of top spin and miles per hour here to the right there. Yep, that's right. And the miles per hour that we calculate is the average speed throughout the trajectory of the ball. So it's a little bit different than what you might see uh, when you're watching a professional match that's using a radar gun and detecting the speed off the racket, which is typically a little bit faster than the average speed. Oh, wow. So as you can see, there's actually a lot of great information going on here. Very detailed. So Darren is now serving from the other side. Ryan is returning. And as you guys notice, Ryan's a left-handed uh, player. And that's part of the, the algorithm that's programmed in there when, when it asks you, are you righty or lefty? Is yep. that correct? That's exactly right. So then it'll know whether you're hitting a forehand and a backhand. And actually, we're going to automate that. Um, so now the app's going to detect what side you're feeding from and understand then what's your dominant hand. Perfect. And I saw that that was an out shot. There was a circle with a hole in the middle there. So uh, telling us that that was out. Exactly. I was just going to point out, you could see there when uh, Ryan hit the ball back over uh, that it was uh, marked as a feed. And so it also distinguishes between what's a feed and what's an actual forehand or backhand and it won't include the feeds with your data. Got it. So this thing's pretty smart, huh? Pretty smart. We're trying to make it continually smarter. It's like a self-driving car here. <laughs> That's exactly the idea. <laughs> All right, so we'll take a look at the stats and the heat maps from this match between Ryan and Darren. So first off, the app shows combined stats for both players. So you can see shots per hour, uh, percent of shots in across both players, as well as the shot speed, uh, shots beyond the service line that measures depth and then a few stats around rally length. So the longest rally the players had, as well as the percentage of rallies under five shots, between five and eight shots and above eight shots. And then below that, you have stats broken out individually for each player. And so you'll see there's two circles here at the top. Right now, Ryan's circle is selected. If I tapped on Darren's, then this would show all of his stats. So going to Ryan for a second here, you can see that it breaks out consistency of his forehands and backhands based on the direction which he was hitting, so cross-court and down the line. 
You can see here he's got more consistent cross-court forehand in this match and more consistent down the line backhand. Um, overall, slightly more consistent forehand. Um, and then you can also see the average shot speed, um, 46 miles an hour, and then 71% of his shots were beyond the service box. Uh, below that, you have stats around serve. So you can see serve percentages broken out for the deuce and the ad side for first and second serves. So you can see here that um, Ryan's first serve percentage, uh, relatively low, close to about 50% here, but uh, strong second serve percentage on the ad, slightly uh, weaker on the deuce. So immediately this is something that he could look at and perhaps focus on you know, second serve percentage on the deuce side as well as his first serve. Um, and then you can see it breaks out serve speed for first and second serve as well here. Yeah, so below that, um, we have charts that show shot distribution, spin distribution, ball speed. Um, again, you can tap on the opponent's circle to see uh, those stats for each individual player. Um, and then if this was also a doubles match, then this would be broken out for four players as well. Um, here you can see percentage of shots hit as far as you know, how many forehands versus backhands and serves, volleys, etc. Um, you can also tap in on any of these shots, let's say backhand, to see um, the spin distribution for that shot. So how much was uh, Ryan slicing his backhand versus hitting over it? So you can see slicing it about 28% of the time. And then for his backhands, averaging 45 miles an hour with this fastest one at 60. If we scroll back up um, above the stats, there's three different heat maps that we show in the app today. Uh, the first one is shot placement. So where all of your shots landed on the court, uh, we'll go look at Ryan's here. Um, and then there's a variety of filters underneath these heat maps that allow you to see how do your depth and placement compare for your forehands versus your backhands, for example. So I can tap on these filters to deselect shots. I can see here that 69% of Ryan's forehands were behind the service line. Um, he was hitting a lot of his forehands um, cross court into Darren's backhand corner, so using that lefty forehand. and. Um, I can see then by comparison, his backhand is actually slightly deeper on average, um, 74%, but hits a lot of his backhands in the middle of the court, about 55% in that middle third. Um, and then you can even go further here, tap these in and out filters to see where are your most common mislocations. So this is pretty eye-opening, I think, for Ryan. You can see that a vast majority of his backhand misses happen in the net. He only missed one deep here and a couple wide. So that's a, probably a point of emphasis for him um, as he's you know, playing more matches in the future. Similarly, can look at it for forehands, a little bit more uh, varied here, but still most of the errors in the net um, as well. Uh, below these filters for the stroke, you also have filters for shot spin. So if I tap on this radio button, I can see uh, where all these shots landed based on their spin type. And then I could tap on these spin filters to just see particular shots. So in this case, I could see just Ryan's backhand slices, understand if he's hitting a good neutral ball, or potentially giving his opponent something short in the middle of the court that they can attack. Um, and so you can see that here, um, he's, at, he's getting at least a lot of his slices towards Darren's backhand corner. Uh, maybe he could work on the depth a little bit, but overall pretty consistent shot for him. Only three misses here. So that was the first heat map. Um, if I swipe over on the shot placement heat map, you'll see the next one that depicts hitting positions. So where the players were when they made contact with each shot. And again, you can filter these by stroke type and spin type. And one of the things I like looking at here is how does a player's core positioning vary on their forehand versus their backhand and for the shots that they made versus the shots that they missed, are there particular trends there? So I can see about 76% of Ryan's forehands were beyond the baseline. Uh, and then by comparison, he steps in a little bit more on his backhand uh, than he does on his forehand can also look at for the shots that he missed. Um, actually, more of those were inside the court on his backhand side um, and on his forehand side. Actually, it was pretty even to what his normal hitting position was, but more of those errors happened behind the baseline. How about uh, first, first serve percentage? Yep. So that's exactly what we have here in this last heat map for serve placement. Underneath this, um, we do have the serve percentages broken out uh, for first, second serve, and for deuce and add. Here you can actually see where those serves landed and the same kind of filters here. So let's say we just want to look at first serves. We can see that uh, a lot of Ryan, Ryan's using his slice serve a lot as a lefty, um, you know, down the tee on the deuce um, for most of his serves and then out wide on the ad. So I'd say that's pretty smart serving on his part. 
Um, can also see for the serves that he missed, for example, um, where did those happen? And so most of those uh, serves were deep. Um, and then can also view these by spin type as well. So like, let's say for example, um, uh, look at his slice serves and then um, you can see where those landed or his flat serves. Um, pretty varied amongst all of the spin types here in terms of his placement. So you as a player analyzing this data, mm -hmm. right? Um, Ryan actually lost this. What was he doing wrong? Yeah, um, I think one thing is the serve percentage could have played a big key, uh, key in that, um, especially only getting about 15 or 50 percent of his first serves in. Um, if we go back and look at uh, Darren's first serve percentage, um, quite a bit higher, no double faults. So that definitely could have had something to do with it. Mm -hmm. I think overall, if you look at kind of their consistency, Darren's backhand was really solid. Ryan's a little bit less so. Um, that could have been also one of the key differences. Um, and then you see, actually, Darren shots a little bit slower on average, but a little bit deeper on average. And I think that's something that's actually pretty important for a lot of players to understand is depth and placement of your shot oftentimes matters a lot more uh, than the speed of the shot, both in terms of uh, creating points as well as forcing errors. All right, so we're on the court. Our court has already been Wing vision approved and set up. And members can just easily bring their phones in and slide it in so they can use the app without bringing any hardware. So super simple. They can just do that, start recording with the app. So guys, just that easy. Thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. All right, guys, so if you want to try Swing Vision for yourself, there's a 14 day free trial just for you and if you decide to continue with it there's a $20 discount code link is below swing vision definitely check it out